Hey, what's going on Raider Nation? Welcome to another video for the Black and Silver Way. It is your host Dylan, and the day I came back on Sunday from the Bills game, I'm just not into making a game be, uh, game video because I'm drunk and I'm tired and there's no reason to make a video. And yesterday, I ended up uh, you know, doing some stuff with some family that's been in town for uh, Christmas, so I wasn't able to make a video there. And also, I sliced my pinky wide open on some glass, so I also had to go to the hospital and get seven stitches. So that wasn't fun as well, but I am here finally making a video for the Bills game. As you guys know, I'm a season ticket holder, so I'm always at the home games, and it was a lot of fun. It was a great game. We were able to get that third win, and I just want to say one thing. You know, this season was not the way we all planned it to be. I knew it was either going to be a really strong season or we were going to choke really hard and it was going to continue to struggle. And that's pretty much what we uh, had a season. We had a really bad, fast season. And in my opinion, I don't know about you guys, but this season went by really fast. Like it flew by. So it's already over. We have one game right here in Denver and that's it. So uh, the ga the season's over now practically and uh, it went very fast. But, you know, there was a lot of ups and downs, mainly downs, but the ups that were ups I'm very proud of this team, okay? The Bills game, they fought in every single aspect of this game. The Raiders were very dominant and very strong. They came out just like they came out against the 49ers. They came out just like they came out against the Kansas City Chiefs at home. The three wins that we have at home this year, guys, were very strong wins. You know, they weren't just like, oh, you know, we kind of won. You know, even though it was a 26 to 24 game, uh, you know, we were strong, guys. We were very strong in aspects of the game. We had a lot of good strengths. Some players outshined other players. And uh, I want to get into the players that I was very proud of to this, at this game. And if I forget somebody, sorry, guys. But let's go ahead and start it off on defense because overall defense was dominant on this game. And I wanted to uh, you know, give some uh, credit to where it's due. Of course, it's a given already, guys. Charles Woodson, his 17th uh, year in the NFL. He's going to be first ballot Hall of Fame. He has another interception on this game, uh, which makes it four interceptions for the season. He's playing just like he was playing um, in 2003, 2004, any of the years that he was on the Raiders and with the MVP Packers season. He's playing great football right now. There's no way that Charles Woodson will not be back next year. In my opinion, we need to lock Charles Woodson into a two-year extension. This year, they probably are going to do just another one year and then a one year again because we don't know if he's going to get injured or we don't know how he's going to be feeling after another season of football. But the way Charles is feeling and how confident he is in all his press conferences, he's playing really good football. And for his age, he is very blessed to have the athletic body and healthy body that he has. And I know that he wants to play the game as long as he possibly can. And he'll go to 42 if he's still playing the way he's playing right now. So, um, you know, he's the Michael Jordan of the cornerbacks. He's the Michael Jordan of the uh, safeties uh, in the, in the um, you know, the National Football League, you know, standings. I think he's like a Michael Jordan of the NFL. You know, he just could do it all. He could do it all. He's very consistent, and it doesn't matter on his age. So Charles Woodson also gets another interception. He had a great game as well. Very proud of that guy, man. I actually had like, and then they did like a tribute on the Oakland Raiders screen up there for all the good moments, and then he was throwing up the O, and like he was just like watching the video with all of us. Like he looked like he was about to tear up. I teared up. That was just emotional because – He's done so much great things in his career, and he's accomplished so much, and it's like, he just, like, I don't know. I just wish he would have won a Super Bowl with us. That's that's what I wish. That was, like, the cherry on top. Anyways, TJ Carey, a steal, guys. A steal this year. He's been consistent, and he's been growing slowly every single game. He nearly got an interception. He jumps on a forced fumble this game. He gets a really good game. He has a breakout game again over the last few times that I've been watching TJ Carey, it seems like he progresses every single time of every game. So TJ Carey was an absolute steal. And the player that gets the defensive player of the game, in my opinion, is Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack went off in every single aspect of this game. Putting pressure on Kyle Orton all the way throughout the game. He got two sacks on Kyle Orton, two batted down passes, and not only that, he was disrupting the line every single play of the game. He has a lot of tackles. He had like five solid tackles by himself. Uh, loss of yards on a couple tackles. He had a breakout game. 
and he is hungry for that defensive rookie of the year. And that's exactly what he was on his mind yesterday. I'm playing the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo's where I'm from, and I'm going to go all out on this team right now. And he was doing pro moves. Uh, I mean, those those swim moves, those bull rushes. I mean, he's a rookie for Christ's sake, and he looks like Ray Lewis. He's stacked. Like, he's huge. It's just crazy. Like, the sky's the limit for Khalil Mack. I can't brag, and I can't be more proud than Khalil Mack. To have him in our organization is a huge, huge plus. So, uh, you know, shouts out to Khalil Mack. You're a freaking beast, man. Another player that I'm pretty proud about is going to be Justin Tuck. We all know that Justin Tuck does a good job on the line, and uh, he hasn't had a really big season with us, guys. But the last few games, especially the few wins at home that we've had, he came alive and got a few sacks. And he got a, another sack today against Kyle Orton and was doing a really good job in the fourth quarter keeping pressure on Kyle Orton another person that didn't have a big year this year but has done a few nice things during our wins at home is Antonio Smith Antonio Smith had really nice plays today he had uh, also a sack or a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and got through the line and he just pumps up everybody and he does a really good job at trying to be as as most as most disruptive as he can be um, you know I expected a little more from Justin Tuck and Antonio Smith I think we all did we were really pumped when we got them especially Justin Tuck but uh, it is what it is. At least they're still fighting. That's what I'm really proud about. You know, it's not about how you lose. You know, it's not about how bad you got, you know, defeated. It's how you're going to bounce back the next week. And that's what I thought this team was definitely not going to have. You know, once the playoff picture was out and once we were on a big losing streak, I thought for sure there was really no hope to win a game this year. And when we won the game uh, against the Kansas City Chiefs at home, we got our first win. You know, that was definitely a, a big plus. And then they they lost, and then we win the Niners. I, it's just, it's been like, they just show up sometimes, and I'm very proud of these guys to fight like that. And um, I just, it's really important to me because we're trying to build a foundation. We're trying to change the culture here. And you can't, you know, have these players that are just so used to losing. You got to break that streak and you got to be hungry. And that's what I see sometimes come out of these players. And I see a different team. It's like night and day. I don't know what you get with the Oakland Raiders sometimes. But like I said, this game right here, I was proud of every single player. And the last defensive player that I have to say, I have to take my hats off to is Brandon Ross. Brandon Ross was balling out. He's been balling out, and I've seen, I liked him since last year, and I like him this year. He's definitely someone that could stay healthy, stay consistent, and, um, you know, sometimes he got burned last year, and sometimes he gets burned, but, I mean, he's, like, supposed to be a third stringer, and he's playing really good football, especially right there next to Charles Woodson. He's taking initiative, and he's making a lot of plays. So, shouts out to you, Brandon Ross, doing your thing. I really would like you to be back next year, especially as a backup or even a starter. He does not do that bad. What a good safety. What a steal, man. What a steal. Okay, at first, this game pretty much seemed like a loss already, in my opinion. After the first quarter, I was very worried because we couldn't get anything going on offense to save our life. We were having struggling offense, especially with Greg Olson's really pl uh, stale play calling all year this year. You know, conservative out to the left, conservative out to the right, handoff here and there, conservative screens, conservative, very conservative, basic, you know, offense that Greg Olson likes to run. So, you know, when teams are really paying attention to us during the week, week on watching our film from the previous week there's not much that we adjust to so I was really worried to see all the three and outs we were getting right off the bat with Derek Carr in the offense it necessarily wasn't Derek Carr's fault but it was definitely I just feel like it's the play calling I feel like if you let Derek Carr throw down the field or let him stretch the field that's where he's most successful and I feel like a lot of these conservative passes here and there it's kind of hard to get started to get things going so Greg Olson did a good job by adjusting after the Bills were figuring us out, and we started making some big plays. They started letting Derek Carr throw down the field. Throwing to Tompkins. Tompkins has had a really good year so far with us from the Patriots. We acquired him through a trade, and uh, we ended up, uh, or not a trade. It was not a trade. We got him from free agency, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was free agency, not a trade. Yeah, he's doing a good job regardless. Tompkins has showed up to play. He has really good hands, and that's something that they said that he struggled with. And so far, he's been really good threat with our wide receiver core. So uh, he got a 50-yard pass from Derek Carr. Uh, Derek Carr also makes this insane move, runs out to the right, throws it to Andre Holmes because he's the biggest receiver we have. And Andre Holmes sometimes has really good hands. He bombs a 50-yard pass to Andre Holmes, which pretty much seals up the game, gets us on the 20-yard line, nearly two minutes left of the game. We go down and score a touchdown. 
it was just a really good game. It was a really good play by Derek Carr. He's playing smart football. He's taking all initiative for everything he does. I can't rave better about how much good Derek Carr puts in this organization. And, um, you know, Derek Carr is a great foundation to start with. And another really good player that we had no idea was going to be playing the way he's playing is Latavius Murray. Latavius Murray is a beast at running back. He's been I mean, every single play, it's like five yards, five yards, five yards, five yards, 20 yards, 15 yards. It's up every single time he's finding a hole and he's breaking out. He looks like DMC in his prime. And I just can't brave, rave and brag about how good Latavius Murray is going to be, especially next year with full offseason reps and a better scheme. I know we're going to fire Greg Olson's ass, so I just feel like Latavius Murray is going to be that a running back that hopefully stays healthy and he's like our Frank Gore you know because he's looking like Frank Gore he's really he, he gets low he gets low and then he just dips out of the hole so um shout out to Latavius Murray you're a beast bro and I'm very glad to have him he is definitely going to be our starter for next year and he's really young man he's really young he's ready to go and he's freaking tall as hell uh, another player that is, uh, you know, has stepped it up this year, and I used to talk a lot of shit about was Darren McFadden. You know, Darren McFadden is not the flashy runner that he used to be, and he knows this, we knows this, and the organization knows this. But when he gets a chance to run, he'll break on you. You know, there's nothing wrong. You know, there's no doubting that. But to find the hole is where his worst, uh, his worst attribute is. You know, his route running is not that good. But that's why he has no problem. He should be our second stringer. You know, I don't want to see Darren McFadden leave the organization. You know how many people have a Darren McFadden jersey? Do you think the Raiders organization wanted to let Darren McFadden walk out the door last year, especially with all the merchandise and everything we have tied into Darren McFadden? Darren McFadden has been a Raider since day one. He loves the organization. He loves Oakland. He loves Marcel Reese. He loves everything about it. If they are going to extend a contract, contract he's gonna take it regardless he's not gonna want to go anywhere else and I know that he you know I've talked so much shit about Darren McFadden it's because his his career got ruined by injuries I saw all the potential we know the potential I seen him be a fucking beast he destroyed the Denver Broncos absolutely embarrassed and destroyed the Denver Broncos back in the day I was like is this the next Bo Jackson I had no idea what Darren McFadden could put on the field, and he went out and did a game like that in 2010. That was a crazy, crazy display of running. And then the Jacksonville Jaguar game, the Pittsburgh Steelers game in 2012. This guy is a hard runner, and if he stays healthy, he could be a great backup. You know, injuries have ruined this guy's career, but at the same time, he's still very young. And he's healthy now. And if he shares touches with Latavius Murray, that's what I want to see happen. I want to see DMC back next year because I know his heart is a Raider. And there's nothing wrong with that. If the players want to be on the Raiders, let them come over here and play their hearts out. Last thing that I want to end this segment with is a lot of people see Tony Sperano's big, you know, locker room rants about after our wins of how good of a mentor he is, you know, and these players have a lot of respect for him. Every single player in their press conferences respect the shit out of Tony Sperano, and I respect Tony Sperano. He seems like a really uh, solid dude that, you know, is a respectable guy, you know, he just wants to win, he wants to, he's a really good mentor, and he's a good person to have in the organization. But there's one thing, you know, people are like, you know, Jim Harbaugh is out of Oakland. I mean, he's out of San Francisco. I mean, not Oakland. He's out of San Francisco. It's already been announced. They're parting ways with uh, Jim Harbaugh. There's a lot of controversy how Jim Harbaugh could ruin a franchise. And there's a lot of uh, stuff that he says he's a superstar coach. In my opinion, Michael Singletary was running the San Francisco 49ers up to 2011. And when Jim Harbaugh came in in 2011, they went right to the NFC or to the NFC championship. Then they choked from a fumble. Then the next year, right to the Super Bowl, and they choke from, you know, Colin Kaepernick throwing it over to a bad route. And then again, they go straight to the NFC championship last year again. And uh, you know, Sherman hits the ball. It's just they choke again. I'm telling you, Jim Harbaugh, just because of one year in San Francisco right now and all year this year, do you think Jim Harbaugh wants to coach his heart out knowing that the organization is going to get rid of him? Do you think they're gonna want, he's going to want to coach his heart out with all the media and everybody hating on him and saying that he's a bad coach and everything? Do you think he's going to want to coach his heart out for all those fake-ass fans that have been booing him the last half year just because they've been losing? Hell no. That's going to ruin everything that a, a, a coach is going to want to coach for. You know, do you think he's comfortable right now? right now hell no he's not and you have him playing with Colin Kaepernick very inconsistent he's a bitch ass attitude he has a very bad attitude Jim Harbaugh is a great coach 
He's a superstar coach, okay? And he's got the mentality of an Oakland Raider coach. He reminds me of John Gruden. He is crazy, and he will freaking back your ass up to the day he dies. As long as the organization is behind him 100%, Jim Harbaugh will win a Super Bowl. And I know Jim Harbaugh is not going to leave the NFL. I guarantee you he will not win it. He will not leave because he was so close to getting that Vince Lombardi award and his brother is a dominant coach with the Baltimore Ravens. You don't think Jim Harbaugh is going to want to stay in the National Football League of America and want to get a Super Bowl? That's what he's going to want to do. He's been in the Raiders organization before, and he knows that he loves to be the underdog. He turned the San Francisco 49ers around like that. If he comes into the Raiders, he could turn the organization around like that. He is a superstar coach, and he's going to be perfect for Derek Carr. So I am all in to get Jim Harbaugh this season. A lot of you guys are saying, let's keep Tony Sperano. I want to keep Tony Sperano, but put him back as the offensive line coach. You know, he, did, he was doing a fine job doing that, and he could still be a mentor in the locker room. There's nothing wrong. He doesn't have to be the head coach. There's some people that are better at being a defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, like Dennis Allen. He wasn't fit to be a head coach. Now he's going to go back to be a defensive coordinator for some team next year. I guarantee that. Now, Tony Sperano needs to step down from head coach. Let Jim Harbaugh come in here and coach his heart out. And I would even get rid of Reggie McKenzie. Reggie McKenzie has a nice drafting. And I wouldn't want John Gruden as our GM. But I would want Tom Gamble. I heard Tom Gamble might come. Who, who formed the whole San Francisco 49ers draft and roster for the last 10 years. And they've had excellent drafting, guys. Patrick Willis, Navarro Bowman. Deshaun Goldson, he pulled in a lot of free agents. Like, Tom Gamble is no joke. If we could get Tom Campbell and Jim Harbaugh in here, that is going to be set for success, especially with Khalil Mack and Derek Carr and this draft coming up. I mean, the sky's the limit for the Oakland Raiders to be a contender again within the next two years if we could get them in the organization. I'm done with this video. Let's save this all for the offseason. But I'm excited, Raider Nation. Let's go and let's win the Denver Broncos. Let's try and just pull an upset real quick. I don't want to lose. I don't want to get embarrassed. We haven't beat Peyton Manning. Since he's been on the Denver Broncos, we have not came close to beating Peyton Manning. He's beat us by two touchdowns every single time. So let's win. Let's put Peyton Manning in the dirt. And let's... Get Jim Harbaugh in here. Let's get Tom Gamble in here. If Reggie McKenzie stays, I guess it's okay. But we better have Jim Harbaugh right in this organization within two weeks, Reggie. We better have a superstar. I want to see better offensive coordinator as well. I'm out, Raider Nation. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on the video. I'm going to be doing a lot of good stuff in the offseason. I'll be going to the LA Bulls event. I'm going to go to the Oakland Raider draft party again. I'm going to be doing weekly videos on what's going on in free agency. Like, share, comment this video. Share it with your friends, all the Raider Nation. Uh, let's have some fun with this, guys. So I will see you on the next video. Peace.